The future of trucking is autonomous, whether you like it or not, and it's coming sooner than you might think. Bosch invited me to their facility in Flat Rock, Michigan to learn about the latest technologies that aim to make big rigs and cars in general safer and easier to operate. They say it's possible to make the shipping costs come down with the use of autonomy. If shipping costs less, then all of us can benefit. First up is the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-everything communication technology. The road to full autonomy is a long one, but having your truck receive information from roadside beacons and other surrounding vehicles can help find a quicker route in the city or on the open highway, and it can also prevent accidents. The idea is to equip trucks with additional antennas that can read speed and direction of an oncoming vehicle at an intersection provide a warning if a collision is imminent, or help to avoid the accident. So this is something that we hope comes in the next couple of years, that it's mandate, mandated for light duty and then maybe ultimately have heavy duty as well. Another way that big semi-trucks are getting smarter is with the use of ultrasonic sensors mounted in the front bumper that passenger cars have used for some time. Bosch is working on a sixth generation of this system to help avoid slow speed collisions with people or any other nearby objects. Can a truck get rid of its side mirrors and replace them with cameras and view monitors? Not quite yet. Government regulations in the United States still require the use of side mirrors, but camera technology allows for a smaller mirror that in turn improves aerodynamics and efficiency of a truck. Another cool feature is the use of augmented reality to help a technician work on a piece of construction equipment. Simply take a smartphone or an iPad, point the camera at the piece of machinery and quickly check which components need to be serviced or repaired. Is this technology available currently in production or how yes. does this work? So the camera technology that you see on this machine is currently available in production. However, we are constantly working on putting newer technology on. So we, have, we are in the development of three-dimensional systems that you would see out of the automotive segment that would further improve uh, visibility and object detection. The next step of that obviously is to enhance with image recognition and object detection. And this machine is constantly growing. So this is a real technology carrier that will grow with the technology that's available. On the yeah. safety side, this machine currently has a full two-dimensional surround view system. So as an operator, you are in the position to really get a 2D view of top-down and therefore really limiting your dead angles that you have around it. As you can imagine, this machine can turn pretty much around its own axle. So it's very important for me to know what's around. In the rear, we have an additional rear view camera. We also implemented ultrasonic sensors that you can see down here. It's again a product that's available okay. and that significantly enhances uh, the capability of the operator to know what's going on in the back before making, them, making an operation. Let's switch gears and jump into a side-by-side -side for a quick, unique, remote-controlled driving experience. Bosch set up this prototype that is operated via a standard RC controller. What's the point of what looks like a full-size RC toy? It's not to test my driving ability while sitting in the passenger seat. Bosch is looking ahead to a time when fully autonomous cars and trucks need to be operated remotely in order to bring them in for service or for another purpose. It's an interesting idea and also a fun prototype vehicle. We've hooked up uh, brakes, steering and throttle all through this remote control. Uh, it's the exact same remote control you use for a little toy car. Okay. Um, we've got it hooked up to this, this full-size vehicle. So you're going to trust me drive this thing from the passengers? <laughs> I am. Uh, okay. But I also do have uh, kill You have switches. some uh, controls as yep. well if yep. you get uncomfortable. Yep. But uh, I'll, I promise I won't get us into a bad situation. <laughs> yeah.
What enables a giant semi-truck to drive on its own? It's a complicated combination of sensors, radar, image processing and more. Naturally, ability to steer is a critical piece of the puzzle. Bosch is introducing an electrically assisted and computer controlled steering system that is not replaced but works in conjunction with the existing hydraulic assist steering system on a big truck. All right, let's go check out the semi truck and the latest technologies there. See you guys. Ah, oh, now this is what I call working. You can see that big semi truck behind me, Class A truck and it's demonstrating Bosch's new steering system. It's basically a redundant steering system. You get hydraulics and also electric assist. So if one fails, the driver is still able to bring the truck to a stop. So originally in a Class 8 semi-truck, you just have this hydraulic portion here. What we have done is we've taken our passenger car expertise of an electric motor and an ECU and have applied it to the uh, hydraulics. What this does is gives the driver assist function. So let's say side wind compensation, lane centering, from our Bosch camera systems would give us an input, it would enable it to change lanes or change steering positions. Uh, what's your name? Brad. Nice to meet you. Yeah, well, I'm still working on my CDL. I don't have one yet. Okay. So, so thank you for driving today. Yeah, absolutely, no problem. This is a dual steering system with hydraulic and electric assist. Uh, so basically what we're demonstrating right now, uh, next once we get out of the turn, uh, will be a simulated loss of hydraulic steering assist. At that point, the hydraulic shuts off and the system, the truck is basically purely steered electric. Brad is going to approach that uh, turn there. He's going to turn the engine off right now. So right now, engine, engine is off. Engine, engine is off, no more hydraulic assist. So right now he's steering and, and holding the vehicle purely, purely electric. So you can still control it? He can still control it. And now he's going to show you a small maneuver Let's say your engine dies, your hydraulic power fails, and he's going through a little turn here right now. Going down about 25, 20 miles an hour, and he's running that semi-truck through that turn. And this is all pure electric assist that is only active at that level once the hydraulic fails. The steering system is also a building block towards more automation. The steering system can be combined with cameras and other sensors to make the truck actually be able to drive on the highway in autonomous mode. That is correct. This is one of the first steps. You need the actuator and then you can add all the other future functionalities and refine them. The other technology Bosch has is lane centering, which uses the cameras and the steering system to help the driver stay in the lane. And that is a benefit for the driver over the long haul. The steering system also can be used for more automation. For example, level three automation where the truck can actually drive itself on the highway sometimes and then it needs the driver to take over in certain sections. No, let's go for it, dude. Let's go for it. This would not be a TFL truck video if I did not put a head condom on and my helmet. I get to ride along in the Nikola side-by-side -side fully electric UTV with potentially over 500 horsepower in a little tiny vehicle. We have the ability to make powertrain packages up to 590 horsepower, 720 foot-pounds of torque, and that is with a 125 kilowatt hour battery pack. So if you envision the battery packs you see in the EV world, they're typically around the 100 kilowatt hours in a full-size sedan. We will be packing that into a UTV. So this is the Alpha. So in this Alpha we have a 105 kilowatt hour pack and the powertrain is probably right around the 400 to 450 horsepower. So what you experienced today was a fraction of what we can do. Nicholas says the most extreme version of the NZT side-by-side -side will accelerate from 0 to 60 in about 3.5 seconds and using 240 volt charging system will be able to be charged in about eight hours. This vehicle here uh, is configured at around 400 to 450 horsepower with a curb weight around 4,500 pounds. Because of the weight, because of the power, because of the size of this vehicle, we need much larger suspension than you'd see traditionally on a UTV. So this has 
Fox 3.0 internal bypass shocks that you traditionally see on a Ford Raptor. Mm -hmm. So this is sprung like a truck as opposed to a UTV. Uh, this vehicle has 33 inch 10.5 tires. These are load E tires because we're driving out mostly on pavement today. Uh, in production, you'll see more of a load D tire. We're at zeros. We're, we're at zeros. We're not moving. We're not moving. Um, that will change. The torque vectoring aspects of this vehicle aren't completely done because this is such an early phase, but you can get an appreciation for the overall torque of the vehicle on the straightaways and the silence of it uh, operating as we move forward. What kind of speed are we going to reach? Uh, we'll probably get to 60 or 70 or so right here. Okay. Give or take. We will have ABS, we have various terrain modes, so you can set the vehicle to a mode based off what train you're in, and the vehicle calibration will change to optimize the vehicle for that location. The battery is located in between our frame rails, so what that does for us is one, it keeps the low center of gravity, so that gives us the ultimate control of the vehicle, both in cornering, in ascending, descending, and in jumping. It makes for a very, very different uh, feel of the vehicle and the response that you get to the wheel. When this side-by-side -side goes on sale as a late 2019 model or an early 2020 model, the pricing will range between $29,000 and $62,000. Single acceleration gear, so pretty much what we've done is we've taken two electric motors and you're making them a direct drive in a sense, but it's controlling each wheel separately. But there's no shifting, there's no gears, there's no as far as more than one gear, it's a direct drive setup with two motors. Everything is powered from our battery pack, from our HMI, our lights, the vehicle itself, the winches, any accessories, all powered from the battery pack. There's no generator needed, nothing like that. And because if we have such an energy dense battery pack, it allows us to have power export, which is a very, very cool feature. So here, we have a system that you plug in and you can power things to 120 volts, 240 volts. You can actually run a welder off of this vehicle. We don't have any cooling running in our batteries or our, our motors currently on this vehicle because it hasn't been needed. So because our systems are so efficient, we haven't had to have the cooling, but it's all plumbed for that and that's what we'll have in our beta vehicles. Go back to tfltruck.com for more news, views and real world reviews and of course, lots more on the latest side-by-sides.